One more time. Hey guys, I'm John with Legacy Woodworking Machinery, and I'm here with Andy today. Hey. And we're gonna talk about the advantages of manual tool change and automatic tool change options on the Maverick CNC machine. Manual tool change. I've heard you recommend manual tool change to a lot of our customers. And so, since we've got a lot of people looking in, let's just say, why do you recommend manual tool change? When do you do that? Thank you, that's a great question. So I recommend manual tool change in things like prototyping, because I want to make sure that my part's perfect. So between each tool in a multiple tool job, I want to be able to pause, make sure that it's doing what I think it's supposed to be doing, and then go on to my next step. It's also really important in things like small batch parts, where it's really expensive material. Oh yeah, okay. So if I'm making a really expensive sign, and that's really what I do, uh -huh. or cutting boards that are engraved, I'm not doing 20 tools or lots of tools, mm -hmm. so manual tool change doesn't cost me anything, but it does give me that advantage of having complete control of each step, so I don't waste expensive material. Exactly. Okay, my God, that's a good, yep. that's a good idea. Yeah. All right, so my question to you, Andy, is you're the hardware guy. Okay. So okay. with manual tool change and auto tool, automatic tool change, there's things that we need beyond just the machine. In manual tool change, is there anything else that we need? No, that's the great thing about manual tool change. I need two wrenches, one to hold the spindle and one to spin off the knot. Mm -hmm. And they all take collets, they all hold the materials, and I have to stop and change and set up when I'm doing a new job. Yeah. So I still have some setup time at the beginning. Mm -hmm. um, so no, there's not a lot of extra equipment when you do manual tool change. Now when you slip to automatic tool change, uh -huh. there's one or two big changes. And that is we use pneumatic or air systems uh -huh. to load and unload the tool into the spindle. So if you don't have a compressor, if you don't have a big enough compressor, you need about five horses to make sure you've got enough air to do this. And if you don't have dry air, if, you have, if you're in, in Florida, you've got a lot of humidity, yeah. and you get condensation in your air, it can end up in your spindle, and if it rusts or damages the spindle, that can be a five to $7,000 repair bill. Oh, wow. So automatic tool change, love it if I'm doing volume work. Yeah. But not so much if I'm doing all custom or prototype work. Mm -hmm. I save myself some money for those extra add-ons. Yeah. Perfect. Okay. Now, I've got a question for you. Let's come back with another question. When you're talking to people, I hear you say, well, I really call it not manual tool change, but semi-automatic tool change. What do you mean by that? Yeah, that's kind of a fun thing to talk with people about. Okay. Now, semi-automatic tool change is all based around legacy smart tool pad. Okay. This is really cool because my code can be set up with multiple tools. Just it, like an ATC code. Just like ATC, yep. Okay. Now, when it comes down and asks me to change the tool, I'm gonna swap the tool in and out with my two wrenches like you talked about, Right. lock it back up, I'm just gonna hit go. There's no measurement or anything else because the smart tool pad's gonna to do that for me. That wow. allows me to keep on going right. with a really quick change, so automatic tool. I worked with a school over in uh, Blanco, Colorado, uh -huh. and they had a machine, we won't talk brands, but it had a contact pad, and so every step, every new tool, mm -hmm. you had to load a new code, yep. Then you had to stop and have it come down and touch off, and then you had to say, okay, now I'm ready to go. Yeah. So in this system, I load one code, has five tools. It comes to me, asks for the tool, the, the code that the screen says what to get. Yep. I put that tool in, I tighten the wrenches, and then it takes off and finishes the job. But it touches off and measures that tool so I can't get the wrong depth because I Screwed up. Exactly, because I didn't get it just the right amount inside or outside right. of that tool holder. Doesn't matter at all. Yeah, I remember in the early days when, when we were doing these systems, Chris made a series of little collars uh -huh. that we would put in to set stop. You remember those? I do, yeah. So we didn't have to do that, and that was uh -huh. before we perfected Smart Tool. Yep. But that was one of Chris's early, early brainstorms. It's, let's yep. just put these colors on, and it worked. It worked perfectly. It worked great. But this is faster. Yeah, oh, this, much is, this is great. So, all right, um, I think that covers many manual tool change. Mm -hmm. Let's go to automatic tool change. What are the advantages to automatic tool change? What, do you, what's your, what is your number one reason when you say buy automatic? Who, am I, who are you talking who to? Who am I talking to? Yeah. I'm talking to, honestly, it's one to five man shops. If, if I have a phone call, right? Right, right. Okay, you, you get a phone call and you're, mm -hmm. you gotta leave, but the machine's working. Yeah. I walk away and I'm on the phone for half an hour, manual tool change, it's waiting for you. Right, yeah. gotcha. Yeah. So, so that is a really important part of 
automatic tool changes. I can set it and forget it like that old commercial back in the day that we all remember. Yeah. Now, here's the thing. I'm thinking about if I'm a one-man shop mm -hmm. and I do a lot of my stuff all by myself here. Yeah. So I set up something and I can go work somewhere else and I can be sanding or polishing mm -hmm. while it's doing a 10, 15, 20 minute run. I can be prepping for paint. I can be assembling. To me, that's a real big advantage is I just have to push the button and walk away. Yeah. But I see when a customer comes in and wants to chat with me about a kitchen or a custom table or a custom chair, that conversation sometimes, maybe I talk too much, but that conversation can take a long time. Yeah. So when I'm doing a manual tool change, I really can't interrupt the conversation over and over again and go out and wrench. But automatic tool change, the advantage is I can just say, I need to load a new part. You want to come see my machine? Yeah. I put in another part. We hit go and we go back to my office and I can finish the sales pitch. Mm -hmm. But they can see, oh, you have one of those new high accuracy, super flexible, super cool machines. Mm -hmm. So it's another selling point for me. That's phenomenal. It's safe. It's stopped. Mm -hmm. They can come in and see it and they can then get that wow factor of look what it just finished. Right. That's okay. amazing. All right. So what's, what's another good reason to tell me or a customer mm -hmm. why I need an automatic tool change? Well, I like to think of automatic tool change as a workplace multiplier. And what that means is it's doing one job, you're doing something else. Okay. So yeah. kind of what we talked about earlier, but it's working for under minimum wage. Yeah, that's true. By the time you finance it, you're looking at what seven fifty an hour. Yeah, just about roughly. Yeah, roughly seven fifty. So it, it's yeah, it is cheaper than an employee, and it doesn't give me a lip. No, sir. <laughs> it just goes right to work. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so Andy, we've talked a lot about automatic tool change, but how does that actually work? You know, give me the mechanics behind it. The mechanics are really simple. If we look over our shoulders back here, there are seven tools in a rack. Mm -hmm. The spindle goes over and hovers right above, and as it goes down, you'll see the dust dust collector, the little flap comes open so we don't catch the brushes. It comes down and then four fingers come in and grab what's called a pull nut. Okay. And that pulls it up into the spindle and then it stays there. It's always there. The only way to get that out is to put air into the system to make those release because there's a spring that holds it together. So it's a very secure system. Okay. Now it'll go over and we touch off on the smart tool. Mm -hmm. So even with automatic tool change, we use the smart tool because what if I got confused talking to that customer and I put these tools crossways? Yeah. I could tear up my whole bed because mm -hmm. I put a long tool where a short tool, short tool should have been. Makes sense. So I'm still going to use and rely on smart tool, mm -hmm. but it's going to change from one tool to the other mechanically. When it's done, mm -hmm. it's they've done the cut, it's going to go back to where it picked it up, tool station number two. It's going to come down, open that flap in the back, and then it's going to slide into the fork. Now there are a lot of systems that just, you'll see them, they just drop it into a hole. Yeah. What's wrong with that? What's wrong with that is, all my bits have to fit in the hole. Fit in the hole, yeah. <laughs> so if my, holes, my hole on the nose of my tool holder is an inch and a quarter, you can't have any tools any bigger than that because yeah. it will crash into your table or jam up. Uh -huh. So, but when we're doing it, we do turnings, which is our real claim to fame. I might be using a three inch bit. So that's why we have our system come down and then Tracy's built the system so it goes in mm -hmm. and then it releases those fingers, comes up and goes over and grabs the next tool, comes over and hovers above, goes down. And then it will repeat the smart tool thing. So the smart tool is my best friend, especially people that are new to CNC. Yeah. You can use a tool library and, and some people like tool libraries and I say a tool library is perfect if you're doing mass production. Yeah. If nothing changes, I just did 36, little or doors, double-sided doors this weekend for a project. Uh -huh. I was doing the same thing every single time. Same tools, same thing every single time. So a library would have saved me a little bit of time to have it come over and touch off. But at the end of the day, what I'd have saved would have been about 36 minutes. About a minute, a minute for the door. tool changes that would have gone for each one of those doors. Yeah. And so, all right, the trade-off of me not having to worry about the wrong tool. Yeah. The beauty of smart tools, it comes down and touches off. Mm -hmm. And even if I put a great big fat bit in there and I should have had a little tiny bit in there, it won't go too deep. It will ruin my wood. It will make a big fat cut when it should have been cutting one of these small cutout cuts mm -hmm. with a quarter inch bit or something. But I'm not gonna destroy my machine. Yeah. Smart tool for a new operator, people new to CNC, 
is, a, is just the best possible system for you. Yeah. And some people never go on to tool library. Some people go there right away because it's, I'm making the same fishing lure every time or the same, you know, set of cabinets, whatever, all same the time. type of cabinets. Yep. Everything's the same every single yep. time. Yeah, for me, after years of doing it, I still love smart tool. It's still the easiest way for me. Yeah, it's, it's not quite idiot proof. I've managed to prove that. It's not idiot proof. <laughs> I've done stupid things, but it is so close to that yeah. that it's, it is really the best way to start out. Yep, awesome. Well, thank you for spending the time with me today and talking about the differences and advantages of both manual tool change and auto tool change. So it really is gonna depend upon the person and where they're at with their woodworking skills, with the kind of projects they're doing, you know, that really is what makes the difference between do I want automatic tool change or do I want manual tool change? And we have people, especially with the new E-Series, we have people say, could I add automatic tool change later? And we have uh -huh. a sad answer. So give them that. We do we'll have a sad answer this, for there. We'll get it into the situation now. That's true. So with the E-Series, we can add a lot of things later on. Right. There are only two things we can't change on your system. The first is your frame size. Kind of important to pick that. Mm -hmm. And after that is your spindle. We need to know up front if you want a manual tool chain spindle or an auto tool chain spindle. And that's the reason we came here today to talk about that a little bit more mm -hmm. so that you could be comfortable with whatever decision you make. We're excited to have all of you come and be a part of the Legacy family and learn a different way, a better way to do CNC. Thanks for joining us, guys. Have a good day.